Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's also a good time again to read my book with me. Thank you for those who have been reading with me. And thank you for those who have placed their orders. It's so amazing that the book has started going across the counties, across the world, across all the nations. Thank you for reading my book with me. The first week I read the chapter one, you are God's temple. The second week I read, you are God's battlers. And then the third week I read, you are God's masterpiece. Today I'm going to read the chapter four of my book, you are. Today we'll be reading, you are the light. Hallelujah. You are. The Lord began to speak to me saying, I am not raising up my people out of obscurity. I was not sure just what that meant. So I began to study the word, the Holy Bible, to get more revelation. One of the words used for obscurity in the Bible in Hebrew word is cheksnuk. It means the dark and carries the connotation of mystery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. Until now, the church, the body of Christ, has not been as relevant to the world as we should be. Many of us have faded into the darkness of the world and have become obscure and hidden. This is because the light of Jesus in us has grown dim. The word chesnick is used in Psalm 107 verse 14. Here is the context. Because they rebelled against the word of the Lord and despised the counsel of the Most High, therefore he brought them down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness, obscurity, and the shadow of death. He broke the chains in pieces. That is Psalm 107, verse 11 to 14. The whole chapter of Psalm 107 tells us how God uses circumstances to bring people to the end of themselves for the benefit of their relationship with him. There is, this is where many of God's people are today. We have rebelled against the word of the Lord, despised the counsel of the Most High. This is true not only for individuals, but also for the whole church, cities, even nations. Therefore, he brought them down their heart with labor. The phrase brought down means that he humbled their heart. The word labor means wearing effort, henceforth worry. Many people feel that they are driving or striving, but not producing any fruitfulness in their efforts. We have entered into a time of fear and worry in the world. They fell down and there was none to help. They came to the end of themselves. And there was no one to help them. Only the Lord. The word trouble means narrow light place. There was nowhere else to turn but to the Lord. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. The good news is he heard them. Rescued them. And he brought them out of darkness, obscurity and the shadow of death. He broke their chains in pieces, which means that he set them free from bondages and deception that had caused them to fade into darkness and obscurity. There was a time when the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the day. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the same Hebrew word, chetne, is used in this verse. 
for the word darkness. Without form means to lie waste. So, to the whole body of Christ has yet to be come together into the true form and image of Jesus Christ. We are now about to witness Jesus, God raising up the church out of obscurity to become the light of the world. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 goes on to say, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 to 3, you can find that. In the same way, God's Holy Spirit is moving in the heart of his people, calling them out of darkness and saying, Let my light shine through you. Many Christians and some churches are self-destructing in terminal self-centeredness. Only when we reach out to the others can we refresh by the everlasting flow of God's love, true, flowing through us, touching others. Jesus said, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, and out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. That's John chapter 7 verse 38. Rivers of living water speak of the Holy Spirit flowing with liquid life inside of the believer who allows his light to shine forth through all to others. Light speaks of revelation. When we walk in the light, we have greater revelation of Jesus Christ. And being that revelation of Jesus Christ and bring that revelation of Jesus Christ to others. Light reveals God's love. God is now calling forth his people to come out of obscurity into the light so that we can each become the light to the world that we are called to be. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on high cannot be hidden, nor do the light, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but a, a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. That you can find in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16. A city that is set on high cannot be obscure. So also when the light of Jesus is shining through you, no longer will you be obscure. A light can never be obscure unless it stops being a light. Jesus goes on to tell us how to let our light shine before people. That is by doing good works that bring glory to our Father in heaven by revealing his love. This is what causes us to shine. The more people that we bring his light to, the brighter we shine. Those that are wise will shine like the brightness of heaven. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. You can see that in Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. The stars in the night sky declare the glory of the Lord. So too God's people shine with the glory of God in a dark world. God has strategically placed each star in heavens and God has strategically Jicoli placed you on earth to bring light to your environment. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord is moving upon his people and his voice is saying, shine forth my light to nations. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of God is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness, that's obscurity, shall cover the earth, and deep darkness gloom the people. But God, our God, will arise over us, and his glory will be seen upon us. That's Isaiah 60 from 1 to 2. We are entering a time of greater darkness upon the earth, but it will also be a great time of experiencing the glory of God for those who allow the the glory to shine through them. 
Just as the early church experienced a great outpouring of God's spirit and grace, so also the later church will experience even more of God's glory. Remember the Remember, the early church grew tremendously, even while they were persecuted and opposed. We will have even greater challenges than they did. At the same time, we will see greater miracles and the greatest harvest of soul in the history of the world. We have what the world is, bring, is longing for. We have what the world is longing for. They are longing for love. They are longing for joy and peace that can only come from knowing Jesus Christ. A greater darkness and a greater fear comes upon the world. So also the people. We have a greater desperation to know Jesus Christ. They will be drawn to the light. There is a price to pay for the glory of God. The price is your life. You give your life to God the, through the sacrifice of obedience. But the reward will be eternal life and honor in God's presence. But Jesus answered and said to them, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly I say unto you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and die, it remains alone. But if he dies, he produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, me and my father, him will my father honor. That is in John chapter 12. From verse 23 to 26. Our light shines brighter and brighter as we serve Jesus Christ with our lives. Notice that Jesus said in order to serve him, you must follow him. And where he is, where he is there his servant will also be. Jesus does not call us to shine in places where light is already shining brightly. Just as he invaded the darkness with his life upon the earth so so we too must if your life is not shining very brightly it may be that you are in a place that already has some light the greater the darkness the brighter your light can shine jesus is calling each of us to bring him in a dark place where he can shine through us and if that draw out their soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then shall thy light shine in obscurity, and the darkness will be as a new day. Isaiah 54, verse 10, 58, verse 10. There, are, there may be someone in a hospital room or in a prison cell that Jesus wants you to visit. There you will experience the glory of God as Jesus touches that person through you. Then the king will say unto those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Matthew 25 from verse 34 to 36. Jesus is calling you to come to where he is. That is a place that you can serve him by revealing his love to someone in need. We have to be careful not to miss opportunities given to us to minister to Jesus. Remember, after Jesus has risen from the dead, he appeared to some people that did not recognize him. At first, Mary thought he was a poor gardener. That's in John chapter 20, verse 14. The disciple thought he was a hungry stranger. That is in John chapter 21, verse 4. And men on the road to um, Amos thought he was a stranger. 
just passing through Jerusalem. Luke in 24 verse 16. Every time we miss an opportunity to express God's love through good deeds, we miss a revelation of Jesus. And so do the people that indeed that needed it. The increase in darkness in the world is a sign that the night is coming when we will no longer be able to walk. Jesus answered. Neither did this man nor his parents sin, but that he walked, the works of God should be revealed in him. I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is still day. The night is coming when no man can walk. As long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. That is John chapter 9 from verse 3 to 5. The night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, my brethren, let us cast off the walls of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The Lord bless you as you have read with me and go forth and shine the light for you are the light. As long as you are here on earth, as long as I am here on earth, I am the light. Darkness cannot comprehend us. Darkness cannot touch us. We are going to fill the world with the good deeds, with the power and the light of God. God bless you. We we'll meet again next week as we continue to read the next chapter of this book. You are shine forth because you are the light. God bless you. I love you all and thank you. Pastor Rachel, you're blessed. Hallelujah. Amen.